You see the story about uh, the guy that was singing uh, the lyrics to Jay Z's "99 Problems." He said, "I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one." Uh, a neighbor overheard it and uh, called the cops on him for domestic violence because bitches should be a problem. I, I guess that's the moral of the story. I'm I'm not quite sure. I, I, I want to know the races to each of these parties. I, can, oh, I, guess, I can guess. I can guess. I don't even need to read the rest of his article. I can guess. But uh, apparently, yes, uh, this happened in Tennessee. Uh, Devon, editing, editing, guess the, race. 10, guess the race, guess the race, tells TMZ he was in his backyard last week in Spring Hill, Tennessee, drinking a beer, talking to his brother on the phone about LeBron James and the Lakers. Devon's brother called him a bandwagon Lakers fan, to which Devon uh, replied, I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. A neighbor apparently overhearing the conversation misinterpreted the lyric and told the cops he thinks Devon is beating his fiance, who by the way was upstairs taking a bath. Guess he's beating that bitch. So uh, yeah, according to police report uh, obtained by TMZ, cops raced to Devon's home after the caller told him he heard Devon say 99 problems and this bitch ain't one. Devon says cops ultimately got to his house and onto his property with guns drawn before they realized it was a total misunderstanding to say the least. Devon says cops apologized because it seems he got swatted. Devon kept his cool, but it seems it's one uh, particular neighbor who is not cool with him. Um, yeah, Devon is definitely a brother, but uh, I'm assuming that's a, that's a cockazoid on the other end. And it's actually funny because driving down um, downtown Gilbert, there's a brunch spot and it has a sign out that says, I got 99 problems, but brunch ain't one. And I want to pull in there and I want to ask the manager, did y'all ask Jay-Z if y'all can say that corny shit? Like, did y'all ask him if y'all can use that shit? Because I, I have a problem with you have a bunch of white organizations that they're quick to use hip hop lingo to be cool and hip and all that, but y'all don't fuck with the culture. Y'all will use it real quick to make some money off of, but y'all don't fuck with the culture. Take this well, shit down. Use the Shania Twain lyric. Use some shit that you actually you fuck don't, with. Don't tell you don't impress shit. me much. That's only one line I know from Shania Twain. But is that that okay because they say that imitation is flattery so is that not the biggest uh kudos that you can give someone no. other than get and, and then but to caveat my very same thought it's not that they put you know hyphen jay-z or sean carter there at the bottom so maybe you're right maybe it is all just being used up but at then the same time and it again is just always the concern of us African Americans. It was the same thing with Iggy Azalea. It started getting all hip hop ish. That's when Molly Cyrus was doing Justin Bieber and all that. You guys hop on the black bandwagon and you do all this black stuff when it's cool and you guys are making money off of it. But then when your white fans get too upset, you're like, oh no, we don't fuck with that shit anyway. No, no, we back to this whiteness. And so it's a costume. And like my blackness is not a costume. I'm I'm always black. I, I always live this culture. And so don't come over here and make a prop. Y'all got other shit that y'all can make profits off of. Y'all don't have to make profits off of us. Use your shit. If your shit is so cool and our shit is so derogatory, use use them Shania Twain lyrics. I'm pretty sure Reba McIntyre got some shit. Taylor Swift got some <laughs> shit y'all can borrow and put on your little flyer. Like, don't use our shit. I'm actually wondering, because I always think when I think of, uh, I mean, I guess white man's been stealing from every every other race since the beginning of times, right? For as long as we can record race differences. Um, whether you're talking about Spaniards coming in, raping Indians, and, you know, giving us good old America. But I am curious, though, as to, like, because I, when I think musically, it, to me, it kind of goes back to the Elvis effect. You know, like we couldn't have, you know, sexy uh, pelvic thrusting because, you know, it, it was too sexual. And then Elvis does. And then, yes, it's still risque, but it's not as bad. And it's like it almost like it needs, uh, you know, someone who's white in order to kind of make it OK. Need, and you want white to make it right. <laughs> and maybe that's where the saying goes. And, you know, what I'm saying once you once you would, you have to be up to no good. But I think, it's, and I know I was talking shit about it post Malone earlier, but I feel like he really then, for the next generation of, of whites, really opened up that borderline, not only from like alt rock to country, but again, just being Caucasian in general and, and all the other avenues that that goes to, that he really has to be in a, in a position to, to make a killing. And if he doesn't, like he had all the proper tools. 
kind of like uh, uh, again quoting Chappelle again when he was talking shit about the dude who was on uh, to make a murderer. He's like, you had all the proper resources. You know, what I'm saying you could you could have got away. You know, what I'm saying uh, he, he said makes some kind of reference about. Um, even the juice was looking back like, man, I wish I had those eyes, right? Or something like that. Oh, yeah. If you didn't like this podcast, it's probably because you're racist. Yeah. Fuck your feelings, though. <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? You hear me?